their immune illnesses. So they want to find out between the clinicians, how are they diagnosing it, what is the difference, and how are they treating patients? And they're gathering all this data. They made this survey. Some of you may have been part of it. It took like five, six hours literally on the, on the computer to answer the survey questions. And uh, so the first year they were gathering information from, uh, uh, in this case, um, 400, these 450 patients from seven different clinicians. Andy Kolbenik at the Open Medicine Institute with the Open MedNet, the data platform, is gathering five of those clinicians' information, putting it into the data system, and then giving the results back to CDC. So the CDC is actually funding the Open Medicine Institute to do this and gather the information. Um, what will come out of it? Uh, this next five years, they're actually going to be doing some sampling. They're going to start the same 450 patients that now they have all this information on. They're going to take blood specimens and start studying this in more, in more detail. When we have results, we'll be able to talk about it. Um, I don't have any results of those right now. The NIH has actually funded a UK study. Now, we don't have any in the United States yet, but for some reason, they were able to fund a UK study. And this UK study, they're, they're actually, it's 1.5 million over a three-year period, which isn't a lot of money in the research world, but it's something that gets this, this research ignited. And the NIH is the one who's funded it, which is really great. And we'll be working with them with the Open Medicine Institute, Open Medicine Foundation. We'll be working with them as well to really collaborate on some of the studies they're doing. They're going to be doing, getting a biobank together to study immunology and genetics and MECFS. Stanford has a uh, MECFS initiative. Um, they are studying infection-associated chronic diseases uh, and the immune response. They're focusing right now on MECFS. The CFI, which is the Chronic Fatigue Initiative, was the pathogen discovery project that I mentioned, Dr. Lipkin's results, looking for pathogens in spinal fluid and the blood. This was about a three-year project, and it, it's still going on and, and into its second phase right now. Cimarron Research and Griffith University in Australia, they're studying cytokines and natural killer cells, and international biobanks are happening all over the world. There's a lot of scientific meetings going on. These are just the ones that we're part of, but I know there's a whole list of them, but I just wanted to let you know for the purpose of letting you know that people are getting together to discuss this. People are getting together to brainstorm and to round table and to discuss what could we do and what's the next, what's the next step, okay? We'll be doing another one of these meetings probably beginning of next year, getting together the same group of scientists that were at the one in last June. Um, we went to the Invest in ME conference in London uh, this past June. Um, actually, Dr. Kovanek and I were speakers at it to really gather the leaders of patient organizations together so we can really do this internationally. And my purpose to gather people to really start entering their data so we can look at their data and to really touch internationally that what something is going on. There were scientific meetings presenting to patients of, of the new research that's going on. There's an International Lyme and Associated, uh, Associated Disease Society meeting uh, coming up next month in San Diego. And again, Lyme disease, chronic fatigue syndrome, fibromyalgia, similar symptoms, similar platform. We research all of it. We're going to find some answers. And then there's an International Association of MECFS uh, -E in San Francisco in March, if anybody's interested. It'll be uh, Stanford is um, funding some of it, and it's going to be uh, in San Francisco. So the Open Medicine Foundation, which is where I'm coming from today, um, we envision improved health care by really encouraging patients and researchers and clinicians around the world to collaborate. So that's my goal. That's my mission. And this is what we've created Open Medicine Foundation for. We need to raise funds for all this research. So yes, I mean, we're, we're raising funds. We need to raise big funds for it. Um, the first set of 10 10 uh, projects that you saw, we, we put a price tag to it, it was like 13 and a half million. We've raised uh, one, one million, pledged another couple million so far. So yes, if the money was here and we had $100 million, then great, you know, we'd be able to solve all these issues, but that's not really how it works. We have to raise money uh, from uh, different areas, from different people, from large donors, and we're starting to, that's our, one of our focus. My other main focus is talking to the patient community. I love talking to patient support groups. I've been just in, in California, actually, and, and uh, in the Bay Area, talking to patient support groups and really engaging you to help with this research and mainly to let you know that something is going on. Because when my daughter was six, seven years ago and I was told there's nothing going on, the worst thing for probably five of those years was there's nothing going on. So I'm saying, is this going to stay forever? I mean, who's going to do anything about this? So I want you to know, and my reason for 
letting people and being involved with the patient community is to let you know there is research going on, really, for real, first time in history, real research going on. So how are we funding it? Well, we've had uh, two uh, large foundations funding some of the research. The Edward Evans Foundation is funding the genetic study and is helping us and going to be moving us forward in the next step uh, with, other, with some of our other projects as well. Uh, the VMware Foundation, uh, they're a cloud computing company that is helping us and given us expertise, software, and discounting of uh, hardware to be able to increase this data platform that I'm talking about. Because if we don't have a way to analyze the data, we're not going to get answers. So they're helping us and have given to our foundation to be able to increase the capacity of this so we could do it worldwide. For instance, right now, the, the capacity right now is 100 people could go on at once. Well, we want thousands of people to be able to go on at once so that I could roll it, we could roll it out internationally. <coughs> Crowdfunding, we're going to have an annual campaign through social media, through Facebook and all, uh, when we, we, we're going to crowdfund and, and really ask the patient community to ask people they know, ask their advocates, ask their caregivers, who do they know that could, get, could, could fund some of this research that we're doing so we can get this going. I'm determined to raise enough money to get this research going, at least these 10 projects to see what's next, and then we move on to the next phase. Um, online, we have a website, the Open Medicine Foundation, Open Medicine Institute. We have a website. People can just go donate on the website. Uh, we let that be known through Facebook and social media. Peer-to-peer uh, -peer fundraising. People ask each other, what can I do to help you? I know you're so sick. What, what can I do? Well, people are going on walks, on marathons. We had a young woman, a uh, college student at George Washington University, and her aunt is sick with uh, MECFS. And so she, she dedicated one of her volleyball games uh, for it, and she raised $3,000. This could be done all over the United States, all over the world. Just think how much money would happen. But she felt good she was helping her aunt. So when you have people who ask you, what could I do to help you? If you know anyone, walk in a marathon, walking here, walking there. Maybe there's, there's things that they could do. Raise $10, raise $25, okay? It all adds up. My husband and I are doing a half marathon October 20th for the same purpose. Because why not? You know, you ask whoever gives, gives. We, we, we can do it, we can walk it, and, uh, and it's more money to research. Corporate giving, we're asking anybody and everybody we know, do you know any corporations that have foundations that you can introduce us to? If we can get to the table, we can convince people to start having a, an interest in neuroimmune illnesses. But we have to get to the table, okay? So there's some foundations that I, people have said, I know someone who knows someone. Great. Let me know the name. Give me the email contact. Give me the phone number. I will take it from there. All I need is the connect. So anybody that you know that has a foundation or, or a corporation that they're working with, I can do all the legwork. I just need that. Uh, people who have family foundations or other types of foundations, they have to give every year because of taxes. Family foundations, you have to give 5% every year. So if they have to give, let's find the people who want to help health care and improve the lives of millions of people, especially if it's people you know to help you with your own illness. Someone just, I put this the last one, selling movie and TV posters. I just put it there because uh, last week somebody called me up and said, I have a thousand brand new movie posters. Would you like them for your foundation? I said, of course. So I'm just gathering them together. We're going to sell them, and the money will go to the foundation. It was just kind of fun. So we also just try to think outside the box. So people who want to donate things that we could sell, however, I mean, whatever we can do. How are we really informing the patient community? Well, again, we've, we've tried to touch patient organizations. Because patient organizations, there's so many people that couldn't come today and are obviously are all over the world that are in bed or have their own support groups. We want to reach as many people as possible by using our database, by using email, and that's the best way we can do it, by finding out the leaders of these organizations so that way when we send something out, then they can send it to their members. Patient support groups, same thing. We have our e-newsletter and social media and then speaking engagements. So what can you do? I mentioned that we have open MedNet. And if you sign up for the newsletter, then we'll send you that platform. You can sign up for studies. There's going to be, when I roll out the open med net, there's this wonderful company called Brain Resources that has donated 10,000 what he calls cognitive measurement assessments. This is something that's going to be on the, on the uh, computer. And they're games. They're, 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 they're little games. But they test focus, concentration, memory, because so many people have brain fog, whatever you want to call it, common name brain fog. 
we have to measure it. We want to measure it. We want to get a baseline. So that way when we try different treatments, we can see if that has improved. It's different than saying, I think I feel a little bit better. We want to get numerical numbers to test this and to be able to test different treatments. So they've given us 10,000 of these to roll it out. So when, we, when I will roll it out on the newsletter, uh, probably two, three weeks from now, that if you want to join in, all you do is sign up and you play these games, and then we get to these measurements. We want to measure healthy people, and we want to measure people with neuroimmune disease that have brain fog. So we'll also ask you some questions about your medical condition. Again, privacy compliant. And if you don't know what that means, that means that anything that is taken a look at by you giving us information does not have your name or information or address or phone number or anything on it. This is just information. I am looking for um, some patients that are, some kids that are diagnosed with ME-CFS between the ages of five and, uh, eight and 18. We're looking actually for 100 kids for this particular study. Uh, it's part of a CDC study. Uh, we're going to be doing some um, physical assessment and follow-up and medical history and, again, cognitive measurement. Uh, if you uh, have any kids or know any kids that are sick, I do have a sign-up that I'm going to put on the table outside. If you want to sign up, we'll call you and talk to you about it. We're looking for children to study children because children may have a different um, uh, look and see uh, than adults. So we're looking for 100 children for this. So what else can you do? Help spread the fact that research is happening. You know people who are at home who are sick and your patient support groups. Let them know that research is happening to give them hope as well. Stay informed and support medical research when you can. Whatever medical research you know about, whatever you can do in, in neuroimmune illnesses and yourself, support medical research either by on Facebook or, or social media or letting people know about it, letting your friends know about it. And join a community. Um, I'm rolling out a new website, the Open Medicine Foundation website, uh, probably in about three, four weeks. And in it, I'm going to have communities. So we're going to have patient communities, we're going to have caregiver communities. And this is so you can talk to each other. I'm part of a number of patient support groups that talk to each other by huge email streams. Uh, this is more, makes this more international. So there'll just be some place you can click on, you can talk to each other. It's not going to be monitored uh, as far as scientifically, but it will be a platform that you can talk to each other, support each other uh, by way of a community. I wanted to add here some helpful links that uh, if you don't get information from other links and other blogs, these are, are where some of the current information comes up and uh, is available. So the CDC has a website, and you can take a look at the CDC website. Uh, there's a group Pandora. Uh, which is a group that really focuses on educating doctors and helping to pay for doctors to go to different conferences and help educate doctors about neuro neuroimmune illnesses. And they really are focused on the whole gamut of neuroimmune illnesses. Um, and they call it neuroimmune endocrine illnesses, actually. And there's a lot of information on that site. And it's a, it's a, we are uh, doing a collaborative agreement with them so we could all share uh, information to our patient communities. Uh, ProHealth has some wonderful uh, articles and blogs about fibromyalgia specifically. Um, they also talk about ME-CFS. Um, they have a large following of people that uh, have fibromyalgia, so there's a lot of information that people provide and are on the blogs for ProHealth. You can sign up and then you get their newsletters. Um, and Health Rising, uh, Court Johnson writes this Health Rising platform that blogs about any news that comes out as far as research. So this uh, uh, research studies that come out, and he puts it in layman's terms so even I can understand it. He actually took the study that we were doing with genetics. I told him about it, and he put it in words that I now understand it. So it was really good to, to sign up and get information from them. So this just kind of makes you smile. Obviously, you're all very special. You all have what you have, but you want to be able to get better. You want your loved ones to get better. You want to do whatever you can to really get things going. And it really takes us all, those of us who are healthy, to help move this forward. So I want to thank you very much. And I just want to let you know that um, I'll be here the whole afternoon if anybody has any questions and wants to come up to talk to me afterwards. Oh, I'm sorry. OK, so my daughter. Thank you for asking. Thank you for asking. Uh, my daughter's better. And she's better enough that she just moved to New York three weeks ago. And she's uh, functioning. She has her what we call her new normal. And she has her challenges, um, but she basically said, you know, I could be sick at home or I could be sick and live. So she's out and about and uh, tries not to tell me when she's sick, and, and, uh, and, but she's doing very well, thank you. She's on her own, and uh, she's 23 years old now, 
and she got a college education and graduated college, and I was really excited about it. So, so thank you. Thank you. Thank you.